Hey team, so what is the fastest way to recover from a hard run? Okay, a lot of people ask this. Um, I've certainly researched this exact same question over the years, when I, especially when I first started in the sport. Always trying to find out what is the best method to recover from hard workouts, especially these harder VO2 max workouts I'm talking about. Uh, threshold workouts where you're running your tempo runs and you're running closer up toward around uh, 85 to around 90% of your max heart rate. You always want to find out, you always want to seek out leverage. What is the best way I can train and, and do less, but to get better results? You know, I always talk about quality over quantity. You focus on quality training rather than just high mileage. There are plenty of athletes out there who are working their tails off, who are highly disciplined and focused, who are putting in high amounts of volume, but again, they're running too low of a percentage of that volume at anaerobic efforts. So the best way to recover from a hard run is just to think about um, rest and recovery after you've completed the, the track workouts or the road intervals you're doing. Make sure that you're hydrating well before, during, and after those track sessions or the long runs. Okay, one of the biggest mistakes I made, personally made over the years, was not practicing hydration in training. I would get to the race and I would... Um, you can get away with not drinking in a 5K or maybe even a 10K, but good luck trying to get away, get around uh, running a 10 miler or a half marathon or a marathon race without proper hydration, ingesting gels, getting enough calories into your body when you're running. Okay, the faster we run, the more energy expenditure. Okay, so it's absolutely essential that if you want to improve. And, and you want to recover from hard runs, that you're really paying close attention to your nutrition. Okay, so make sure, if you haven't done this in the past, start putting water bottles out every three miles or every 5K, every five kilometers during your, uh, your long run route. Okay, that way you can grab a bottle as you're going out and you can grab it back again when you're coming back uh, on your way back from that long run. Okay. The best way to recover from hard run hard runs, obviously there's there's massage, there's uh, Epsom salt baths, you know, where you're really um, working on helping your muscles recover the, as as quickly as possible. Uh, mesotherapy obviously is very important. Uh, I am a big advocate of dry needling. Okay, anytime you have any type of tight muscles. Um, Maybe it's calf muscles. In my case, it was calf muscles. My left and right calf muscles would always tighten up. And the quickest, best method I've ever found that will help eliminate the, the tight knot that you're feeling in your calf or any muscle group is dry needling. If you have never heard of that, definitely research it. Google dry needling. Most physical therapists um, can help you do that. Well, it's similar to... Um, acupuncture, uh, and they will stick very small, tiny needles in uh, your muscle, but they will move the, the, the needle in the right spot and it'll, and it's, it's extremely diff, it's diff, extremely painful, but only for a few seconds if it hits the right spot. And then, I'm, I'm no joking, at, usually around 48 hours after you've done that, the tightness in your muscle is literally gone, okay? It's all, it's all about the, you know, chakras and, and energy systems that that are within our bodies but um, a lot of times those those muscular knots will knot up in our body and I've found that dry needling definitely is one excellent way of recovering uh, from a hard run especially if you've you're starting to feel some real tightness especially in your in your quads or in your calves from that hard workout so always be thinking what is the best method for me to get the uh, to recover the best way I can after a hard run, obviously making sure you're, you're ingesting protein after, uh, after these very hard workouts. Okay. There's a, there's a physiological effect called, called super compensation where our bodies are about two to three times weaker immediately following a very difficult hard run. Okay. So as long as you're paying attention to jogging on your recovery days, you're going to bounce back and your body's going to bounce back and become two to three times, four or five times stronger than it was immediately following that hard workout. The best way to recover from a hard run without without a doubt is making sure you're getting proper sleep. Again, 
giving yourself as much sleep as you possibly can give yourself based on your, your particular schedule. You know, I know a lot of you out there are working full-time jobs. Maybe you're in school, um, taking care of the, the family, the kids, and, and you have a lot of responsibility on, on you. So trying to balance that and doing the best that you can uh, in terms of rest, okay? All of the benefits of our hard training is going to happen during the rest cycle. It does not happen in the workout itself. Of course, you definitely have to get out there and you have to do the repeat thousands on the track or repeat 400s on the track. You need to get out and do your tempo runs. You have, we have to get out and do those long runs and be consistent with that and not just do a long run one weekend and then give yourself a few days off and then wait another three to four weeks to do another long run. It has to be consistent over a long period of time. Okay. So the best way to recover from a hard run is to, again, think about one, and at least this is what I was always doing. I was always studying what are the, the elite runners doing? That is what I want to do. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being a recreational runner and you may be one. Okay. Going out and having fun and enjoying the sport, maybe just going out and running a 5k for fun or running a marathon. If you're, if that's a goal of yours and you're not really focused so much on time, but you want to, you really want to get out there and, and start a marathon and finish it. That for a lot of people is a huge, uh, undertaking, but a, a huge accomplishment. And I, I agree with that hundred percent. The fact that you, if somebody can just go out and, and start and finish a marathon, that is a very huge accomplishment for a lot of people and as it should be. Um, but the faster you're running, the more anaerobic it's going to be. So the more energy expenditure, um, the more stress on the body. Uh, so it's really important that you pay attention to what you're doing after the track workout is done, after the road workout is done. Okay. You can recover very easily after most aerobic runs, these easy runs, anywhere from two to, to five miles, eight kilometers, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, as long as it's relaxed and you're not building up a very large amount of lactic acid, it's not as much of a challenge versus if you're running very fast, you know, when you're doing tempo runs where you're running closer to 90% of your max heart rate, or if you're doing a VO2 max workout, where, which is a lot of times it could be from these hard runs that we're talking about here, where you're running closer to hundred percent of your max heart rate. Okay. There's muscular damage. Uh, obviously it's mentally fatiguing as well. So make sure that you're paying attention to, uh, positive information and, and not, uh, ingesting, <laughs> negative news or negative people surround yourself with people that are, um, that will support you regardless how fast you run. Because at the end of the day, what your personal best are isn't what matters. What matters most. It's really about the people that, that surround us and, and having that support structure. That's really important because, and, and, and your overall health and overall health is really important. Okay. It's not just about how fast you run a 5k or 10k or a marathon. Okay. So I hope this, this video makes sense for you all. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, regarding, uh, how to improve any specific part of your training or your racing, um, you know, I don't have all the answers. I'm just, a, I'm just one of billions of people out there that, that have their own opinion, but, you know, I competed in the sport from 1992 up to 2018. I still run for fitness, but I, I retired from the sport in 2018. So I've, I had a lot of experiences at the local level, regional level, and international level. So um, if there's something that's bothering you or if there's a, a, a part of your training or your racing you really want to get better at, uh, feel free to leave me a comment below any of my videos. Uh, if you're a watcher of this video, of, if you're a watcher of my uh, YouTube channel uh, long enough, you already know every single individual who leaves a comment, whether good or bad, I will respond to. So uh, you are, your all opinion, your opinion and, uh, your viewpoints and your questions definitely matter here. So hope this video was helpful for you all. And I will talk to you all in the next video.